So this is the MRP sheet that I'm going to give you in the for the exam and you need to fill up all these things here. So let's do this. Now, one of the things that I'm also going to give you, these are all the inputs that you're going to get. You're going to get these are given to you for the exam. So for instance, you have four parts here that we are going to continue from. This is also from the book. So you can see the example from the book and I'm explaining the example from the book. So for A, you have a lead time of two. On, on hand inventory is 50. You have no safety stock and it is a lot for lot for quantity. For B, you have these inputs. C, you have these inputs. D, you have these inputs. Before we start this, I want to do certain things. First one is I want to put this tree together, you know, the MRP tree. So if we can take a look at the book and then go through this, you have a part A. Okay. Now part A has got a subpart D. And for every part A, you need one D. Every A part also has got one C and every C has got two Ds. There is also a subpart B. For every B, you have one C and for every C, you have two Ds. So whenever you buy 1B, you need to buy 1C. Whenever you buy a C, you need to buy D for this subassembly and D for this subassembly. That means for every C you buy, you need to buy two Ds. By the way, you also need to buy one for each A you bought. And we're going to put this together in, in all these things here, right over here. Okay, bear with me for a minute. The other thing that I want to talk about is this quantity Q, 2000 or 5000, can be given to you either as number or you, have, you can calculate it. If you want to calculate it, you want to calculate it as EOQ, economic order quantity. The formula for that is 2DS over H. D is for demand in units, S is the cost of the unit, and H is the holding cost. And these will be given to you. If you, if you are given all these things, you can find the EOQ and then you can use it here. Or you can use a lot for lot. Everything is given to you. Now, one equation that you want to look at and keep it in, on your mind is the projected available balance. The projected available balance PAB for a time period, one particular time period, like week five, for instance, is going to be equal to PAB of the time before that, the period before that. So if this is for week five, then this is for week four. PAB minus any gross requirements, which is given here, plus any scheduled receipts, which will be given here, plus the planned order receipts, any planned order receipts, POR, which is given here. Okay, so you need to know that as well. So this equation is something that you need to come up with as well. Let me choose a better pen. So this is one thing that you need to come up with. Keep that on your mind. Okay. We're going to be using this equation every time we calculate this projected available balance. So let's start. Let's input some of the things here. So we know that on-hand inventory is 50 and the SS is equal to zero, the safety stock is equal to zero, your projected available balance here is what you have, 50 on hand, minus 
the safety stock so that is going to be equal to 50 minus 0 and that is given to you okay here what is given to you is your projected available balance is going to be equal to 60 which is on hand and any safety stock no safety stock that is zero okay another thing that is given to you is that there is a scheduled receipt in week five of ten so this is given to you and this is given to you for c you have the projected available balance is going to be equal to 40 whatever you have on hand minus the safety stock which is five year so that becomes 35 and there is no schedule receipt or anything like that so this 35 is also given to you now the the projected available balance for d is you have actually given 100 scheduled receipts for week four that is given to you as well as the projected available balance is going to be uh, sorry the projected available balance you need to calculate now is going to be equal to this 200 which is you have on hand okay you have an on 200 minus the safety stock of 20 which is given to you okay there is no gross requirements but there is a scheduled receipt that you need to add so I'm going to add that 100 okay and there is no planned order receipts so that is your answer 280 that's also given to you now The 280 is what you calculated. All these are calculated stuff. Now let's look at the gross requirements. From the book, you can see from what we did before, we can see that we need in week nine, we have 1,250 A's you need to have. You need to have 470 of B's you need to have on week 9. You also need to have 270 of D's in week 90. So this is also given to you. Okay. These are given to you. Now we need to calculate everything. So let's start with part A. Part A, we have 50 in week 4. So if you apply this equation, 50, there is no gross requirements, there is no schedule receipt, there is no planned order receipt, so it's going to be the same, which is 50. For week 6, it's going to be the same. For week 7, it's going to be the same. For week 8, it's going to be the same. Now, week 9, we need to buy something because uh, we have some requirements. We have 1250, 1250 A's that we need to get. How do we do this now? First of all, you can order how much you can order. You can order lot for lot. So whatever is the requirements, you can order. If you need uh, 50, you can order 50. If you need 1250, you can order 50. How much you need actually? What we need is 1250. But you already have 50 here so your net requirements is going to be equal to 1250 minus 50 which is 1200 you can buy 1200 and when do you buy this 1200 you have a lead time of two weeks so instead of when we want it in 12 week 9 we can buy it in week 7 so we can buy 1200 in week 7 so that is because of your lead time okay 
because of your lead time you can buy 1200 in week seven okay let's do b for b we don't have any gross requirements here your net and your projected available balance is 60. what is my projected available balance for week five it's going to be equal to 60 which is the pabt minus one minus there is no gross requirement so zero plus schedule receipts i have 10 i'm going to add that and plus i'm not ordering anything that is zero so that becomes 70. so it's going to be the same 70 it'll be the same 70 it'll be the same 70 here again i need 470 i have 70 with me so my net requirements is going to be equal to 470 minus 70 that is 400 that is my net requirements i have lot for lot that means i can buy 400 but there is a lead time for two weeks so i can buy it here on week seven so week seven i'm going to buy 1200 of a's and 400 of b's so when i buy a i need to buy c when i buy b i need to buy c also so my gross requirements here would be whenever whatever i need to buy a one of that and whatever i need to buy b one of that which will be equal to 1200 plus 400 which is 1600 this is what i need to buy for my week seven week seven i need to have these 1600 i need to buy it based on my lead time we'll come to that in a minute okay and i don't have any other requirements so let's start with c i start out with 35 and it is going to be the same 35 here because i don't have any schedule receipts or gross requirements it's going to be the same 35 here however when i come to week seven i need 1600 i have 35 and what is my net requirements now my net requirements will be equal to 1600 minus this 35 and that is 1565 okay that is my net requirements but can I buy 16, 1565 units? Nope, because my quantity is 2000. I have to order only in 2000. That's what this means. So I can order 2000 here. Okay. So what will be my projected average balance? My projected uh, available balance is going to be PAB min T minus one, which is 35, correct? Minus what is my gross requirements which will be 1600 plus i don't have any schedule receipts so zero plus my planned order receipts is 2000 so i have projected available balance of 435 for c now let's for not forget to buy c so 2000 in week seven is needed the lead time is one week so i have to order it my purchase i have to order the purchase order. i have to release a purchase order or planned order in week six so i need to order 2000 here okay i need to order 2000 here so my projected average balance for week eight is going to be the same 435 because i don't have any other activity and it is going to be the same 435 here too now well, let me do for d so i'm going to do d in the next video